And so our um, second commitment in our vow is our presence here with ourselves, with one another, and with our church. And so Pastor Esty is now going to talk to us about what it means to be present. I'll start with a scripture, just a single verse. This is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25 says, Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. So don't stop meeting together. Presence means, at a very basic level, Get together, meet together, come, be with us. Um, we appreciate you attending and being present and showing up. So that's fundamentally kind of what it means, but there's a lot more to it than that. So a couple of other layers of depth that are involved in the vow of presence. And first, I want you to imagine that you're in conversation with a friend. You're sitting together having coffee and you're talking about something that really matters to you and your friend is listening and they're nodding their head, and they're, they're looking into your eyes, and they're making those affirming noises. They are present with you. Like, they're engaged. They're tracking with what you're talking about. Have you ever been in conversation where someone's not present, and they're kind of checked out, and they're looking at the phone, or they're gazing into the distance? So you know what it's like when you're not present in conversation. So translate that kind of feeling to how you are when you come to church. We invite you to be present, to be engaged, um, to not, although we know there's a lot going on in your life and there's a lot going on in your head, we invite you when you are here to, to try to set some of those things aside um, and focus. Focus on what God is doing in your life here, whether you're in worship and we're singing or you're listening to a sermon or you're praying. We invite you to, to be present, to be fully engaged or in your Sunday school class or your small group. Be present, respect each other and listen and engage in conversation. So that's one kind of deeper layer of meaning of the vow of presence. And I have even just a little bit more and it involves um, how, how it feels when you're at a party or something and somebody walks in the room and you immediately know that they're there because they have maybe like a larger than life presence, you know? Or you're with your family and somebody comes in and it's that person that is your go-to person and just being in their presence <sighs> makes you feel at peace and makes you feel cared for. So we all kind of have a different presence about us, a different energy kind of about us, a different um, way that we carry ourselves in the world. And that translates when you're in community. When you come to church, who you are, who you uniquely are, your unique presence contributes to the whole. We talk a lot about the body of Christ and how there are hands, some people are feet, some people are the mouthpiece. But it's also true that in the body of Christ, our unique presence makes this a full body. Some of you are extroverts and we need your extroverted presence. And some of you are introverts and you're thoughtful and we need your introverted presence. So when you make a vow to be present at Keller United Methodist Church, we trust that you are vowing to be presently yourself, to be fully you, mm -hmm. to be fully engaged in the mission and the ministry of this place. And so some practical ways that you can practice this presence here at Keller United Methodist Church is one, as Esty said, participating in our worship service in small groups and Sunday school classes. If you have questions about any of those, I would be happy to get you involved to connect you with a group that fits your lifestyle and where you are at. The second is when you're here, physically turning your body towards people, making eye contact, being in meaningful conversation with one another. And the third, which might be a little bit more difficult, um, but I believe is something that we're called to, is identifying the things in our lives that distract us from being fully present with ourselves, with one another, and with our church. When we identify those, because we all have them, life is busy and life is difficult, um, we can identify what holds us back Maybe we can even share those with our church. We can be present with our joys and we can be present with our struggles. And so we look forward to connecting with you in more meaningful and deeper ways here at Keller.